In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit the stroke and fill in any object. So the stroke and fill are located in a couple of areas. The first area is down here. Uh, and here we can see our fill is the big solid area and our stroke is the outline. Very easy to remember. We can switch back and forth between the two. So it switches the color and we'll show you that a little bit later. Up at the top in the properties bar, we also have the stroke and fill, and I can select the various colors there, as well as alter the strokes uh, and the properties of the strokes at the top. We can also find the stroke if we, uh, and fill on a specific object. So if I use like the selection tool or the uh, direct selection and I click on an object, it'll change the properties. And we can see the properties palette over in the right uh, it also has the stroke and fill in the appearances. And that will allow us to make adjustments to the stroke and fill of a specific object. And we can uh, change the stroke and fill of multiple objects. Notice how if I click on two objects, it doesn't know what the fill is, but the strokes are all the same. They're all one point sized black strokes. So I can change these if I want. I could say I want them both to be yellow and I want their strokes to have an uh, a size of 10. Uh, or I can click on one individually and I can adjust that one specifically uh, by, I don't know, we'll give like a, uh, a lighter orange stroke to this. If I click on, on the areas that have, you can see this dotted line, it gives us more options. So we can see that we can edit the stroke even more and I can play around with this. Uh, I can give it like an arrowhead and you can see that it assumes that we started over here and it built the arrowhead. And then I can tell it that I wanted this to be a dashed line. And right now it's set to a one point dashed line, but maybe a five point dashed line will be good. And so it has this dashed line that goes through making, uh, making my stroke. I actually kind of like how that looks. Uh, I'm going to curve in my edges because I think that looks kind of nice. And I can change my fill into an empty fill. Uh, and you can see as I kind of bring this in front of this shape, the empty fill means that I can see through the shape, which is something that's smart to do rather than if I make a white on a white background, it looks the same. But the moment we move that in front of another shape, it's not the same. So that is kind of how we work with the stroke and fill. And you can use that in the top bar, over on the right in the palettes, or um, in the basic sense on the left. I can also, we'll use this one for example, I can switch the properties uh, of those two. So right now you can see that I have a yellow fill with a black outline, and if I press the swap button, it has swapped it to a black fill with a yellow outline. Whatever object I'm, I'm, I have selected, that is going to be the changes that happen. So we can see that I'm trying to set my colors and that will change the colors of the object that I have selected. But if I have no object selected, so I clicked off and none of them are selected, I can set the properties independently of what's going to happen. So I can like preemptively create the color set that I want. And so I have like a light fill with a dark stroke. And then when I create, uh, when I start creating something like using the rectangle tool, you can see that it has started to make that object. And I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can kind of see that the dark color, but there's that, um, that dark colored stroke with the light uh, with the light fill. So those are a variety of ways in which you can move and alter the stroke and fill. And this applies to almost anything that we're creating. I'm going to create this word. Um, we'll just use the dummy text for right now. And it's telling me if I click on it and we look up here at the top that it has no stroke and it has a black fill. But while I have this selected, I could change it to be a green color. And if I wanted to give a stroke to this, I could tell it so. I'm going to give it a darker stroke on the outside, and I'm going to 
up the size of the stroke by having it be uh, having it be a, a four point stroke. I'm going to like pull up one of these uh, shapes. I kind of like this one. And there are some other things that we can do. Once I have this selected, instead of having a uniform line, I can give it a thick to thin line where it starts off thicker and then ends uh, thinner. And I'm going to like up the size of this because I kind of like it, um, it being really asymmetric. And instead of having a basic straight line, I could also even change this a little bit given some of the preset uh, settings that are, uh, exist in here. I kind of like this jagged line because I think it's kind of fun. Uh, it set it back to one point because that was the settings, but we put it to five points. That kind of gave, made that somewhat unique and interesting of a stroke. So there's lots of different ways that we can play around with the strokes and fills. So that is just a couple of interesting ways in which we can play with the stroke and fill and their various properties so that we can come up with a variety of different artistic effects.